Okay, let's try a couple of those for practice. All right, so suppose we have, we are given four cosine x equals four cosine 12 pi t. How are we gonna uh, transform this into something more useful? So what we're interested in is the 12 pi, that's the part that's not fitting. So we're gonna take 12 pi, and we're gonna multiply that by two over two, and we get two pi times 12 over two. So we put this all, which is six. This is six. So when we put it all together in a new equation, we get x equals four times the cosine of two pi times six t. And there we are. If we need to know what the period is, we take the inverse of it and t is equal to one sixth. And whatever that turns out to be in our calculator, if we need a decimal, we can do that. So six one over x uh, equals 0 0.167 approximately. Very good. All right, now let's do another one. Uh, how about x is equal to three cosine 0 0.06 pi times t. Okay, so pause the video for a moment here and see if you can work this one out, and then we'll come back to it. Okay, welcome back. What we're going to do is we're going to take 0 0.06 pi, that's this part right here, multiply it by 2 over 2, and we wind up with 2 pi times 0 0.06 over 2. That's kind of a strange number. If we uh, do the math here, we find that the frequency is equal to 0 0.03 hertz, 0 0.03 cycles per second. So this is a very, very slow period. It takes, uh, well, a long time to go through one cycle. Um, and if we take the inverse of that, then t is equal to 0 0.03, 1 over x. t is equal to 33.3 .3 seconds. So it takes a little over half a minute for this thing to get through one complete cycle. Okay? One more. Let's go with x is equal to 7 cosine 420 pi times little t. What does that come out to be when we simplify it into a useful form? Again, pause the video here, work it out, and then come back. Okay, welcome back. What we're going to do is we're going to take 420 pi. We're going to multiply that by 2 over 2, and that comes out to be 2 pi times 420 over 2. This part is equal to 210. So that means that the frequency equals 210 hertz. And if we want to have the, uh, the period, it's going to be whatever 1 divided by 210 is. 210, 1 over x. So yeah, 0 0.00476, that's not a very convenient number, but that's what it is. So 1 over 210. Okay, so what are we, and so then the final form of the equation, I guess we should, uh, we should finish it up here, um, should be x is equal to 7 cosine 2 pi times 210t. Fairly easy to get from this to this when it's a uh, when it's a big number. But anyway, now what we see here is that sometimes it is useful to use the frequency 
frequency of 210 hertz. We can get our minds around that. So in that case, we want to use the uh, the AP form of this equation because 210 hertz is right there, and, and away it goes, and it's easy for us to get our minds around. If we're talking about a little a little tiny number like this, then the period makes more sense. And we're going to have, we should put this in the final form, x equals 3 cosine times 2 pi over 33.3, repeating, times little t. Take the, uh, the cosine of that whole thing. Uh, and again, if in this term where the period is so long, it's more intuitive to look at the uh, the equation in this form and say, hey, the period is 33.3 seconds. Good to go. All right, next we are going to move on to actually graphing one of these. So let's take this thing out. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the very first one that we did. The very first example that we did. X equals 4 cosine 12 pi t, and uh, how will this look as a graph? I'm not sure that AP is going to have you make a graph, have you do it in this direction. That's why I'm saving this for last in this video here. Uh, but so what we're going to do is we're going to tease this out. So if they give you this equation, X equals 4 cosine 12 pi t, we already figured out that the uh, this boils down to x equals 4 cosine of 2 pi 6t, right? And this is the frequency. This is the frequency. And if we are going to, yeah, so that's the frequency. So what that means is that um, 6 hertz. That means that we're going to go through six complete cycles in one second. So I've laid out a graph here so we can figure it out. Here is one half second, here is one second, here is our amplitude on this side. So let's start off with the amplitude. What should the amplitude be? The amplitude should be four, because this is the amplitude. So we're going to start our graph up here at four. Now, at the extreme negative, it's going to go to negative 4. We need to figure out where that is, but we'll, we'll get to that. Um, the main thing right now we're going to look at is that the frequency is 6 hertz, which means we're going to have 6 crests during 1 second. So we're going to have a crest here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1 second, 6 complete cycles in that 1 second. So that's going to be the crest. Uh, cosine functions always start at a crest, which makes it easy. And then there's going to be a trough between each one of these. So here's where the troughs are going to be. There we go. And now all we have to do is approximate the line between the crest and the trough. So we're going to come down like this. Remember, they're going to pass kind of halfway in between. So when we do this, we'll make sure it goes through like that. And it's going to come up to here. You get the idea. Almost done. There it is. Right? So we wound up with a waveform where we have one, two, three, four, five, six cycles in one second, which means six hertz. If you work out the math on this, uh, you can figure out that this is one sixth of a second. One sixth of a second comes out to be 0 0.167 seconds per cycle. That's the period is this right here, and it comes out to be 0 0.17 seconds. And that's it. Okay, so what did we cover here? We figured out what the uh, the form of the equation is that uh, AP and College Board likes you to be familiar with and be able to use on the AP exam. We figured out how to manipulate the given equations into a useful form, and we figured out how to use that useful equation to figure out the particulars of the graph that we are interested in. We also figured out how, given, given a graph, we can work uh, from the graph to create the, uh, the equation that describes it. All useful stuff. Hope you got it, and uh, enjoy your week.